Hi guys, I'm Nick. I'm a professional PowerPoint slide designer. <laughs> um, I'm not really, I'm a startup founder and that's kind of part of the story that I'm going to talk about today. That I have a pretty frantic lifestyle and the last 18 months have been even more, the last two years almost, have been even more frantic than usual. So in the last two years I got married, I moved to live from London to live here with my wife, I have started a sort of startup within a startup and done various things to make an already busy life busier. So one of the things I want to talk about today is my experience of doing some weight tracking and some of the sort of fatty things I've got into, different diets, different fitness regimes, and how I've been able to look back over time and sort of measure that. And in kind of preparing for this, what I've noticed is if I look over the last sort of 18 months or so, there's, this, there's sort of six epochs in my life over the last 18 months. This is the output from like a we things scale does that has that does anyone not know what the we things body scale body measuring the, the we things wi-fi scale is cool so it's a scale you stand on beams your weight to the cloud and then you can access it so this is just my recordings of that over the last 18 months and as i started to look into this i could see these kind of six really distinct phases and that was good because in my mind, that's how I felt that the phases had been. I could tell that I'd been doing and trying different things and they'd have different impacts. So I'm going to kind of go into each of these phases and see what's driving it. So everything started off before I really got into what I later found out was quantified self and before I even had a wee things and was really doing any tracking. I was basically doing basic calorie tracking where I would try and eat you know, 2,000, 2,300 calories a day of stuff. I would look at numbers on a packet, but I would not really track it very successfully. I mean, I've never managed to go more than a couple of days of doing successful food tracking. And I would do quite, quite a bit of running as well, like uh, a few times a week running. And that was basically my sort of baseline. And things sort of uh, went on from there. Two of the things that really um, catalyzed me to get more into this stuff was one, reading Tim Ferriss's Four Hour Body, which I guess almost everyone here has probably read. It's the kind of you know, the um, starter drug of the whole thing. <laughs> and, uh, and getting a wee things scale, which is just incredibly easy to use. And that kind of led into this sort of first epoch of just of, of calorie counting, not really doing anything specific. I had a general goal, which was, you know, I just wanted to be able to, I enjoyed running, I felt like it made me feel fitter, I wanted to maintain body weight. And this is with not many data points because this was the sort of beginning of everything, what things looked like. So the, the red dots up here are body fat, and there's a few different graphs that show that. And the blue triangle, the blue diamonds are body weight. And in this first kind of epoch, I think some of the key things we see here is that like tracking in itself has an impact, as you know everyone here knows. It's simply the, the fact of tracking makes you very conscious of things, more like help you achieve your goals. And what happens when your we think scales break is you go from like weighing this much, 75 kilos, to weighing 78 kilos over a like month and a half period. So um, I can also remember I was doing a lot of traveling then as well. They were really nice. They sent me a new pair of scales. They paid for the postage and everything. So I can't <laughs> complain too much. So this is kind of e epoch one. As I started to get more into things, um, a few other things started to happen in my life. So I was getting married in September 2012 and to be able to, you know, fit in, look good in a wedding suit and everything. I started doing um, boot camp, as uh, we call it here, but in the UK it's called British Military Fitness, which is like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty cool. But these guys are like actually ex-army guys who've just come back from Afghanistan or something. And they just, drill you in like Regent's Park and doing training and you know I did five sessions of that um, over a few weeks in, term, in getting ready for my wedding. I also at this point started the slow carb diet. Now, has anyone not heard of slow carb? Cool. So slow carb is like an entry level low carb diet. It's an easy to do low carb diet where you just cut out carbohydrates like um, rice, like um, potatoes, pasta, sugar, it's the kind of, end, end, again, it's another sort of entry drug and into this whole thing. So I put these two things together and then this happens. Body weight absolutely shoots down, overall body mass, absolutely you know, dropping there from like 79 kilos down to about 74 kilos over a period of 25 days, which is a pretty dramatic change. So that's pretty cool. 
This. How many pounds is that? How many, oh, Fish. oh, because I've done it on kilos. <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> Don't know. A few. I mean, I now I now weigh like 176, which is like 76 kilos, which is 170 pounds. So. So I multiply it by three or something. Pounds. Like 12 pounds. Yeah. 12 pounds. <laughs> wow. Language problem. So anyway, <laughs> a lot of the significant amount. But there's other, some other weird stuff that went on here because the um, body fat increased. And I think, I think one of the things that's going on here is partially it's the way that the We Think scale measures body fat, which is electrical impedance. And it's focused on your legs because the current comes up your legs, connects, and goes back down again. Um, I tend to put on more weight in my upper body, around my chest and my stomach, which isn't really caught by the scale, is one theory. Um, then as soon as you, if you're eating a high carbohydrate diet, as soon as you start a slow carb diet or any low carb diet, you just lose body water incredibly. Like you will never have peed as much as you pee in the first three days of a, a slow carb diet or any lo low carb diet. So that was kind of kicking all this stuff off. Um, so, I mean, the conclusions from this epoch are, you know, I achieved the goals in a pretty short time. The question is, did I look good for my wedding? You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty cool. So then, then came, <laughs> and, you know, I, I actually managed to, well, I squeezed into these trousers this, uh, this, this uh, New Year's Eve, so just about get in there. <laughs> Okay, so that was like Epoch 2. Epoch 3 came along. This was after I got married in like September 2012. I moved here. Um, but I didn't just, you know, pack up and move here. I lived between London and San Francisco for about two and a half months of continuous back and forth, four or five flights. I was coming here for the first time, meeting people, exploring all the cool stuff in San Francisco, like pizza and all of the other kind of unhealthy, carby food that's on offer. Um, and that kind of thing makes it pretty hard to stick on a particular dietary regime because what are you going to do? Is, you know, the, the people you just met the night before said, "Oh, we're going to pizza at Delfini." You say, "No, I'm like, you know, obsessively on a low carb diet. I'm not going to go." It's, it's not, not a great way to make friends with people. So I kind of loosened up on my regime a little bit. I also started this time to get into something called Occam's Protocol, which comes from Tim Ferriss's Four Hour Body. Has anybody tried Occam's Protocol? So this is, it, it's this, who, who here does weight training? Resistance weight training. So this is a particular type of resistance weight training which I've now got really into, which is, you can call it Occam's, you can call it super slow, there are different names for the protocol. But it's basically about doing extremely heavy lifts very, very slowly. You basically lift the weight as slowly as you can. And what you're aiming for is to get the maximum time under tension of your muscle. So you're not trying to like pump like this or any of this stuff. You're just trying to, you're aiming for between 60 and 90 seconds of continued exertion on a really heavy weight. The great thing is you only have to do it for about 10 to 15 minutes a week to see pretty good benefits. So the supporters of it say, we'll see if my data says that or not. So I started getting Occam's Protocol. The other thing that Tim Ferriss does with Occam's Protocol is he loads you up with calories on it. So on a base slow carb diet of no carbohydrates, he increases your calories to 3,000 calories a day. So it was pretty awesome because I got to eat like a three egg omelet, two sausages, bacon, and all this stuff for breakfast, and a protein shake. Who could possibly guess what all of this thrown together meant? Well, it meant this. So a kind of post-wedding explosion of body fat going up from like 14% to 18, trending up to 18%, um, body mass going from 75 kilos up to um, a record, <laughs> almost a record, 80 kilos. I was also not doing very much ac activity a week, um, physical activity, because of traveling so much. And you know, there's some pretty clear conclusions from this, and some pretty obvious dietary things. So those two periods are quite extreme. I then got into a phase of being a bit more settled from about January 2012. So I meant. I think I meant 2011 when I was saying 2012 before. So in January 2012, things got a bit more settled. I'd moved here, settled in. And then I read over the holidays two more, two more books, which were really influential. So Body by Science, for anybody who's interested in weight training, general anything with, with fitness, I highly recommend reading it. It's a very you know, science-y based approach to finding the optimal way to exercise your muscles. And these guys talk a lot about the difference between like exercise and uh, the difference between exercise and leisure and how you should you know, try and optimize one, leisure for making you feel good, exercise for making you strong. 
their basic principle is you want muscle, as much muscle in your body as possible. And they go through a lot of data about how people who have more muscle will survive better in like critical life situations, better chance of surviving cancer, and basically anything you throw at somebody, if they have more muscle, they're gonna do better with it. I also read Gary Tabs's Why We Get Fat, which is, I mean, this guy is like the arch enemy of sugar, carbohydrate, everything like that. He's right over in the camp of high fat, paleo style diets. Putting these two things together, I started drinking 50 grams of whey protein a day, which is like a double, a double shot, a full thing. And I'd have that every single morning, as well as having a two egg, two egg omelet with, with some other protein. And the idea was I would do this, I would do this 15 minutes a day weight training, and that would you know, lead to good results. And I did this really consistently over the course of around about a year. And you know, some pretty interesting baseline results. And on this, I've also plotted my lean mass. Um, you know, take it with a grain of salt because it's Wi-Fi scales, but I do manage to put on muscle here. So my muscle here goes up from, you know, my, my lean mass goes up from 65 to 66 kilos. So, you know, two and a half pounds, what we heard, which is actually, it's not an insignificant amount of muscle to put on. Um, but of course, I also put on quite a lot of body fat. And this was kind of puzzling me, right? Because I'd read this Doug McGruff book about how doing this kind of weight training that I was doing um, should lead to, amongst other things, a good body composition, like a low amount of fat. I was eating a diet that, you know, I didn't, or I wasn't going full on on the 3,000 calories by this point. It was just like a sort of, pro I wasn't calorie counting, but probably 2,300 2, calories a day. So I was pretty puzzled about why I had this sort of consistent weight gain throughout the whole year. It didn't make much sense, and particularly the really alarming increase in body fat here. And this is a really distinct trend of body fat trending upwards. So that was definitely a problem. So I didn't really have an answer to that when I ended this, this, this epoch. What did answer it was, though, was going on to a high-fat diet. So the next thing I did was read this other book, which is really good, which is The Art of Science, <laughs> <laughs> the Art of, Science of Low Carbohydrate Performance. And these guys, Jeff Bolek and Stephen Finney, they are even more in the kind of Taub's anti any kind of carbohydrate pro-protein camp, but they throw a lot of fat into the mix. One of the really fascinating things I found out from this is they had clinical trials that showed that eating too much protein could have trigger the same kind of insulin response that you typically get from eating sugars. So it can raise your insulin levels and can cause you to put on fat. So I instantly, the, the, what they described is what was happening to me. I stopped having 50 grams of protein a day with breakfast and straight away, you know, I started to, I started to lose weight. This was pretty cool for me because I'm quite into like fatty food. I love chicharrones. <laughs> I love, I, I started cooking frying eggs in coconut oil because this is like the most fatty oil with the best, it's got like the best um, ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 and all this other stuff. So this book is really interesting. They kind of drill into how performance athletes can exist on a fat-based diet. So it's all about nutritional ketosis, which is this state your body gets into where it burns energy um, using fats, not using carbohydrate. This was pretty compelling, and it had some pretty cool results. So this is only, a, I ran this for about 97 days. Um, during this period, I was doing super, still doing super slow weight training, um, which gave me a continued, so I was still doing super slow weight training, but eat, eating a deliberately high fat diet. And when you go on this diet, like you have to try to eat this much fat. Like it's a conscious effort to, you, you know, you feel like nibbling on something, you go eat a handful of chicharrones and it, it's, it's difficult to maintain. <laughs> but this is really positive because my overall body mass is staying still, my lean mass is increasing and my body fat content was dropping. And this is like, this was the goal. I mean, this is the goal of body composition, to have increasing um, lean muscle, decreasing fat, and stable, stable weight. So this was pretty great until, um, what do I get? Okay, so until <laughs> cholesterol entered into the whole mix of things. And I don't know if anyone here has got an answer to this because I'd like to know it. But if, um, if I type cholesterol into Amazon, and this could be because of all the other stuff I've got from Amazon, the first thing I get is cholesterol down. Sends 10 still simple steps to lower your cholesterol, what your doctor will tell you. The second thing I get is the great cholesterol myth. 
why lowering threshold won't <laughs> present heart disease. <laughs> so this is just, it's a total mess. Like, no one is in any kind of agreement on whether cholesterol is good or bad for you. I had a cholesterol test done, which, if you ask some people, my ratio of HDL, HDL, which is good cholesterol, to LDL, which is bad cholesterol, some people will tell you that's great. You know, other people will tell you, like you know, my doctor will tell you, it's not good. So unfortunately, cholesterol really derailed this whole cool thing that was going on here. And I guess, you know, I'd like to end on a firmer conclusion, but I don't really have one. I mean, this is, this is, this is what life is like now. Kind of, I mean, I was talking to someone earlier on about trend lines, and I, I don't know, I just picked this one because it looked good. I don't know if there is a trend in here. So I called this the in interstitial period, because I'm guessing I'm going to figure out something to do. But um, I think my kind of body fat here is growing um, slightly, which is what people report when they're on a very high fat diet, their body fat content will reduce a lot. And a lot of people have said, for a man getting below a sort of 40, uh, 15%, you can only do on a very high fat diet. I've heard a lot of people say that. And then mass is just kind of all over the place here at the moment. Because basically what I'm trying to do is balance all these parameters of you know, low carbohydrate, not too much fat to have high cholesterol, but you know, not enough lack of fat that you, know, you get hungry, not too much protein, because that, that does something. So it's a, little bit, it's a little bit confusing at the moment. I wish I could conclude on something further, but that's kind of where I am. So maybe somebody else could help, could help me out with the cholesterol question. So to kind of conclude, what this was all about was you know, tracking body weight and composition over an 18-month period. Um, I did it in a very relaxed way. You know, I didn't measure every day. I had long breaks when I wasn't doing it. I think this data shows you can still conclude some pretty valid stuff doing things in a kind of lazy way. Um, what did I learn? Well, if I look back from what I was doing at the beginning, one of the things I've included is, from a time point of view, that I don't need to spend two hours a day, two hours a week running in order to maintain body composition. I could do if I wanted. I could do other things like um, meditation, um, which could, could could be more beneficial for my overall wellness than running, which you know is not great for knees and so on. Um, I don't need to do boot camp to do it either. It's also not, it's not necessary for me to count calories to maintain weight. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure of that now. Um, you can, I know that I can lose and put on weight very, very rapidly. I also know that, of course, the high-fat diet is the absolute best thing for me for body composition. There's obviously bigger sort of ongoing health questions about cholesterol and the role that cholesterol plays. So I hope I'll be able to come and you know, talk about my conclusions in a few months' time when I might have figured out exactly what the deal is with cholesterol after an extensive literature review. So thanks. That's my, my story.